Hi, this is Margaret Maloney, and welcome to the Death Dhamma Podcast. Together, we will consider life, death, and impermanence. Because in between birth and death, we lose things, not just our glasses and our keys. We lose identities, relationships, ideas, and more. But what we can gain right now is facing this together, and we will gain freedom, peace, and progress on our path. Hello, Death Dhamma community. So glad that you are here and that you're joining me today as I share with you the lessons that I picked up from my wonderful discussion with Wendy Block. Speaking with Wendy, I'm reminded that impermanence is a gift, whether we want it or not. All of the anicca we experience in our lives presents opportunities to practice. There's the easier opportunity of watching my emotions rise and fall when I realize I forgot to buy coffee filters versus being with my emotions as I learn that a close friend has cancer. And then there's the reminder that on any given day, how I navigate impermanence will change. As Wendy points out, my awareness of impermanence is impermanent. So what really is an easy experience of impermanence? And what is a difficult experience? Well, really, any experience can be either of those things or actually neither of those things, right? With equanimity, it just is. And that is absolutely not me saying to you that I can always accept uncertainty and change with equanimity because I don't. I practice at let's say, we'll call it different levels, on different days, or even throughout the course of any day. I suspect that makes me another human being, living and growing in this time and place, and in this lifetime. Generally, I'm grateful for the opportunities that my karma brings me. Even the situations that I view as difficult, Like I recall when I was processing the deaths of two family members within the same week, more than one of my Buddhist friends told me how great this was for my practice. Now, conceptually, I knew they were right. I was being given this amazing opportunity to leap forward with my spiritual development So yes, it could be great for my practice, but it really took a lot of time and contemplation to know it at a deeper level. It was really, you know, that combination of living it, sitting with it, reading the suttas. But when they originally said this to me, I accepted it as one a lovely Buddhist way of trying to find the right thing to say to someone who's dealing with the death of their loved ones, and that is never easy, right? And also, a documented best practice. The learning came from the time and concentration and the being with it, watching myself being human and feeling the emotions. I, I had to have the experience to live firsthand through attachment and aversion. And it was and still is the experiential that draws on compassion and also can lead us to become more compassionate toward others. And I'll always remember my season one discussion with Diane Wild and when she spoke about the loss of her husband, going through the grief after her husband died, of understanding that, one, this is just breaking your heart wide open. And then since then, I've encountered other readings and people using that expression, the breaking open of your heart, and that when your heart is broken open, you have more space, right? You have space between all those jagged, broken pieces, which is true, and that it enabled her, Diane, to be more compassionate toward others. When things got tough, I began to realize that this was no ordinary, difficult situation. This wasn't some setback in my career. It wasn't a miscommunication and a fight or argument with a friend or loved one. This was 
beyond anything I had ever experienced. And I had faith in the teachings of the Buddha to see me through it. And I reached an understanding with myself, not to push, not to beat myself up for whatever goals I was not hitting, but to realize that what I had been given to handle was more important than any other item on my to-do list. And what I had to do was to extend compassion to myself. And later, as helping others became part of my path, I learned that my experience would help me be compassionate toward others if and only if I accepted that my experience was only representative of how things worked for me on my path. Not that I didn't have lessons learned to offer, but that those lessons may or may not be helpful. And that sometimes all that was needed was for me to see the suffering. I didn't necessarily need to manage somebody through their suffering. I didn't need them to do things the way I did. What was helpful for me may not absolutely have been helpful for them because we're on similar but different paths. So really, I just needed to see the suffering, to see it, to understand it didn't matter if it was the same as mine or the person was expressing suffering the same way I did, but to see it and to feel that suffering and to take action to help alleviate that suffering. So to help alleviate that suffering. And so in the face of impermanence, it's really important not to forget compassion. Wendy made this statement and she said, in all of this, I'm paraphrasing how she said it, compassion is the bomb, like B A L M M like Mary, as in a balm, which is something soothing that we apply. You know, for example, there might be a balm, which is like an ointment that you put on something that is painful or itchy. And it took me a minute because at first I thought she was saying compassion is the balm, like B-O-M-B, which is, you know, a slang term for like, wow, that's the balm, as in explosive, really in a good way, like that's a really great thing. And I think both of these things can be true. It is the soothing, healing item that we can apply to help ourselves and others navigate impermanence on our paths. You've been listening to the Death Dhamma Podcast with your host, Margaret Maloney. Thank you so much for being here. Come find me on margaretmaloney.com, M-A-R-G-A-R-E-T-M-E-L-O-N-I.com. And until we meet again, may you be well, may you be happy, may you be at ease, and may you be free from suffering. Bye for now.